All right, let's talk about the bird watching niche. In this video, we're gonna do a deep dive into the bird watching niche. Is it a good niche to enter? How competitive is it? What kind of traffic can we expect? What kind of affiliate offers are out there? And should you start a new site in the bird watching niche? All right, so we're going no edits, one take on this video. Let's talk about the market size of birding, as they call it in this Daily Beast article, or bird watching. So according to the Daily Beast, bird watching is a $41 billion industry, okay? It might be a strange hobby to you, but a lot of people are in to bird watching. And that means that if a lot of people are interested in this hobby, a lot of people are searching for things on Google, which potentially could make for an interest, interesting niche site idea. So let's talk about some of the competition, kind of the mid tier, the lower mid tier competition sites in the bird watching niche. So I quickly did a little research before starting this video and found three niche sites. Um, two of them are, seem to be strictly around birds. The third site seems to have ventured off a little bit. So this one is called Bird Watching Buzz, DR of 27. I like how they're promoting a ebook at the top. So they're talking about bird theaters, different types of birds tips for, I don't know, taking care of your equipment, specific products that they're recommending. And again, a great way to diversify your income with a niche site is to create an info product. So I like how they have an ebook here. All right, another site that I found, what I love about this site is this, the design is not your typical WordPress niche site, affiliate site. I don't know if that's on purpose or not, but this site is doing really well. Um, also bird watching bliss. Okay. They have a DR of 39. So they're promoting the best binoculars, the best scopes, squirrel proofing your bird feeder, um, best hummingbird feeders, bird feeder plans. And then again, this website, the way that it's designed and laid out is definitely not as, as I mentioned, your traditional affiliate site. All right, the last one, and this is arguably the most interesting, you know, this is not a low competition site, DR48. Um, that's a really solid DR, but they're doing the best, according to Ahrefs, out of all these sites. Now, the domain is birdwatchinghq.com, and I don't know how this site started or where it's been headed, but what I've seen is that they're definitely branching out um, it's not just talking about bird watching, right? So we've got white flowers, 50 types of mammals, yellow wildflowers. Okay, so none of those things have to do about bird watching. And if we kind of just go into their menu, so there's definitely bird stuff up here, but we've got squirrels, plants, um, and different kinds of animals. So I don't know if that's part of the strategy on widening the niche. And, and typically it's not something that I would recommend. I like to stay on topic. If I have a domain about bird watching, I like to talk about birds, but this site, and we'll talk about this in a second, is doing the best out of all these sites by far in terms of traffic. All right, so speaking about traffic, this niche definitely supports um, a good level of traffic, whatever that means to you. For a lot of people, you know, I think most people's baseline goal of starting a new niche site is to at least get into Mediavine. That's kind of the best way that I think about it. So 50,000 sessions per month. So bird watching buzz. And again, we're using Ahrefs as just an estimate. So Ahrefs is saying, again, this is a DR27. Ahrefs is estimating 66,000 visitors per month from Google. And as we, most of us know, Ahrefs does tend to un underestimate by a factor of, I would say two to three times. So it could be closer to 125,000, maybe even 190,000 visitors per month from Google. And then we have bird watching bliss, Ahrefs, again, this is a DR39. So Ahrefs is saying about 81,000 visitors per month. And then the most interesting one is bird watching HQ. Again, DR48 by no means is that a low DR site, 
but their traffic is off the charts here. 469,000 visitors from Google. So again, I don't know the timing and how they decided to branch out away from just bird content and, and talking about flowers and types of mammals, but at least up until this point, it seems to be working really well for them. But from the Google traffic angle, is this niche big enough to support a media vine level type audience? Um, again, this, with a DR39 and then this one's a DR27, uh, the answer is definitely yes. All right, what about income? Okay, so we looked at estimated traffic levels. All three of these sites are in a premium ad network. The first two are in the Mediavine, and the last site is in AdThrive. Okay, certainly good site, uh, good signs rather when we're trying to validate a niche idea. So depending on estimated RPMs and, and estimated traffic, you know, at the very least. You know, these sites are making on the low end, I would say $3,000 per month, probably for bird watching buzz on the low end, the high end 15,000 plus um, for the third site here, just from ads. And again, that depends on the Ahrefs traffic estimates, but bird watching HQ, 480,000 page views per month from Google. If we assume a, thir assume a $30 RPM, that gets us to about $15,000 per month just from ad thrive so the the ad opportunity here is really good also so monetizing with ads obviously is arguably the best way to monetize niche sites right now in my opinion even more than affiliate marketing um in part because of the way that google is is trending with that with their product review update but let's talk about affiliate content as well you know it's no surprise that these niche affiliate sites are going after some of these best type keywords. So I have bird watching HQ pulled up here in Ahrefs. I have filtered on best and just looking at their top 10 positions. So they're, they're showing 390 keywords, um, best, best, best. So best bird feeders, best binoculars for birding, best cardinal feeders, best hummingbird feeders, all these different products that they're promoting and it appears they're mostly promoting Amazon, as you would assume. Now, in terms of are they actually using the products, buying the products, taking firsthand pictures of the products um, per Google's updated guidance? Granted, I, I only looked at one or two articles, but it doesn't appear that they are, not to anyone's surprise, right? So here's their kind of mini review for this bird feeder here. This looks like a stock image. We've got bullet point pros, and that's about it in terms of the review. Here's the second one, right? Just a link on Amazon. We've got the positives and then there, there's some negatives, right? So we've got very basic bullet list pros and cons. You know, the, the, the traditional way of building out an affiliate site, clearly not a lot of effort has gone into um, making an effort to show Google that maybe you're handling the product, maybe you're actually writing a legitimate review of the product, but this post and this content as of right now has no issue ranking and we've seen that quite a bit in regards to the product review update. You know, in my opinion, I don't know that the algorithm can pick up on that quite yet. That's where Google wants us to be, where we're reviewing the products hands on. That's their guidance, but from what I can tell, looking at a lot of different um, best keywords, the algorithm is definitely not there yet. And this example is, is, is a prime example um, of that. So Amazon is you know, the most popular affiliate network. It seems like I pulled up Affiliate Corner, um, typed in birds. It looks like there's another um, garden bird affiliate program as well. So they've got food, accessories, bird feeders, the commission's only 5%, but if you're trying to kind of diversify away from Amazon or, or, or show another e-commerce store, which is also part of Google's guidelines, it looks like this Garden Bird affiliate program uh, could be worth a look as well. All right, so what about EAT or more specifically the expertise, right? Who is writing this content? Who's responsible for writing the content? Are they experts? Does it even matter? 
um, in the bird watching niche, which in my opinion is, is strictly a hobby, right? Everyday expertise. So I don't know on the EAT scale how serious Google is going to care about this, but these sites actually do a pretty decent job of building out, you know, at least making an effort to build out an about page on why they are so-called experts. I don't know if this information is true, uh, but at least Birdwatching Buzz is doing a pretty good job here. James is a biologist, fascinated by birds, yada, yada, yada. Um, so they're building out a, a decent about page here. I mean, it, it's not the most robust page I've seen, but at least they're making an effort with some photos of why they're considered hobbyists or why they're considered experts. Bird watching bliss. Um, we love birds and bird watching, right? And then we're talking about the college years of studying birds. So there's a bit of a story here. I don't know if there's an image. It looks like this is a photo. Um, again, not, not a very long about page, but at least they're making an effort here. Same with bird watching HQ. You know, this is more of a strict classic uh, affiliate site here. I don't know in terms of expertise. Um, you know, kind of kind of explaining why he's interested in birds. Please know that I'm not an expert. All right. Well, I, I appreciate the honesty there. So again, this is not in terms of the EAT scale, if, if such a thing exists. Uh, bird watching is definitely hobbyist. So if you were to go into this niche, it's not really something that I would be concerned about too much. All right, let's also talk about the volume of content, right? How many articles is required to get to this level of traffic, okay? Again, it's one thing if these sites only had 100 pages, well, that's pretty easy to replicate. But if they had 2,500 pages, then that would make me kind of sit back and pause about entering a niche like this. So how many articles do these sites have is definitely a metric that I like to look at. So I pulled these up in Content Explorer. Again, not, not perfect, uh, but it gives us a rough idea of how much content. I do set a word, word count filter here to try to filter out any, I don't know, miscellaneous pages. So the, the, the number of pieces of content for these three sites ranged from 130 to 370 on Birdwatching HQ. So, you know, not a small amount of content, but not an insurmountable amount of content either. If you were to look at this niche and project as something maybe you would build out over two to three years, I think that's certainly an attainable goal in terms of the number of articles that you would want to publish on your site. All right, so that wraps it up for the bird watching niche. Do me a favor, if you enjoyed this video, pop that like button, subscribe to the channel, let me know what you think about this new format and let me know what you think about the bird watching niche. Thanks guys.